In today's video, we discuss the difference between grommeted and non-grommeted hide pipe bags. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. So you've decided to go the route of a hide bag, but there are a lot of options on the market right now. There's goatskin, there's cowhide, there are zippered pipe bags, there are sealed pipe bags, there are grommeted pipe bags, and there are non-grommeted bags. Today we're going to discuss the pros and cons of a grommeted hide pipe bag versus a more traditional tie-in as we have over here. Now both of these bags are Lee and Sons bags. This is a goatskin bag in the Gandhi cut, and this is a cowhide bag in the Gandhi cut. But given that these are both the same cut of bag, I thought there was never a better time to compare and contrast what a traditional tie-in looks like versus a grommeted connection. The first thing I wanted to look at was the overall shape of these two bags. Now you can see here with a traditional tie-in, the nose of the bag goes up quite a long way. So if we're going to say the meaty back part that's going under your arm, if that is more or less level, you can see how high the neck is going and that the chanter's pointed somewhat out at this particular point. So when I put this under my arm, and I always like having the meatiest middle part of the bag interface with the crest of my ribs, the widest part of my rib cage. So when those are together, now this is my own personal pipe bag right here. So we're gonna step back so you can see it a little bit more. You can see that the blow pipe is angled back perfectly because of the neck pointing up and that I have the correct length blow pipe on this particular set of pipes. The channer is gonna actually come down into my hands with a little bit of pressure, which to be honest, I don't really mind. Now looking at the same cut bag right here, but with grommets, you can see that if we have the meaty middle part that again is going under my arm, you can see the nose is not going up nearly as dramatically, but the channer is pointed down quite a bit more. It's not angled nearly as out. So for the good or the bad of that, it's not going to have quite as much force on your fingers when you're holding the chanter. But you can see here by the neck not raising as high, the blowpipe is actually out quite a bit. That is not interfacing with my mouth. There are products on the market right now like this perfect angle bagpipe blowpipe positioner that you could put on your pipes with the perfect angle blowpipe positioner and it does go lower. I'm not going to put it down underneath the um, hose ties, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to use a product like this to angle that blowpipe back. But without a product like this, it's going to not be in your face naturally. You're gonna have to kind of pull it back, pull it back. So that's one of the drawbacks, if you will. You can angle it back to some degree in the stock, but it's somewhat limited. There are also products on the market like this universal blowpipe right here, which could go in and put the blowpipe back at the proper angle for you while you're playing and not have to worry about any sort of additional product here. It does have, you know, its look. It's a little bit more mechanical. You can definitely see the ball joint and everything here, but it's a great solution if your blowpipe happens to not be angled at your mouth, if you didn't want to use that positioner or something similar. Now again, why is this the case? On the more traditional tie-in, you can see here, I just have holes cut in the bag and some string holding it together. Well, the nature of that, we're kind of making the leather pucker up to go up and around all of these stocks. And by doing that, the bag is actually more or less like this. Now we kind of think of the back being level, but we've actually kind of pinched it both directions. And by doing that, that's what's raising the front of the bag to such a degree here. So to compare these as side by side as I can here while inflated, you can see they're quite different in their shape. So the grommeted bag is going to have a different shape than the traditionally tied in bag. So keep that in mind when placing your order. Another thing to keep in mind is that this traditional tie-in is taking some of the internal room. This bag simply holds a little bit more air than this bag. Is it an appreciable difference? I'm not entirely sure. This is gonna be not terribly scientific, but it's the best I can do. I'm gonna empty both of these bags completely. And I'm gonna do my best to put full lungfuls of air in and see if I notice a difference between how many breaths it takes to inflate this one versus this one. Again, same cut bag. 
This is about as empty as I can get this bag. It's holding a little bit of air, obviously, in here because of the grommets and the structure, but it's about as empty as I can make it, so let's see what happens. One. Two. So 2.8 lungfuls or so to get this to be fully inflated. Now let's try that same test on the traditionally tied in goat skin bag here. Again, about as empty as I can possibly make it. One, two, I'd say it's about two and a half as opposed to two and three quarters or 2.8 or whatever the other bag was. So there is a slight bit less air inside this traditionally tied in bag because again of the grommets not being present and the leather kind of pinching off some of the space. So if you want to maximize the interior volume of your bag, grommets might be the way to go for you. But one of the biggest reasons you might pick a grommeted bag is the ease of connecting everything. You can see here, these are just hose clamps going through grommets. And I have a full video right up there about attaching stocks to a hide bag with grommets. So you can check that out for more instructions on that. But it's quite straightforward. Now, this particular bag still has a traditional tie-in joint here. So something to keep in mind on either bag, you're going to have to tie in the chanter on most all grommeted hide bags. But in this case, the grommets make the drones and chanter far easier to tie in. On this one, I actually cut the holes myself because I know where I want them, but you can get the holes at least pre-cut. But you can see here, I have some tie-in cord. In fact, this is my favorite tie-in cord, video right up there about this Catahoula tie-in cord, tarred braided twine, but it works really well, but you have to kind of know what you're doing with it. So uh, again, there is a video right up here about tying in a traditional pipe bag, but it is quite a bit more of a pain, I will say, than this. This took mm, the better part of an afternoon. This took just a few minutes. So some quirks and features, if you will, of a grommeted pipe bag versus a traditional tied in pipe bag. The traditional pipe bag, you're going to get perhaps a more ergonomic shape getting the blowpipe in to your mouth without any sort of needing other products versus the grommeted bag where you may well need some additional help getting the blowpipe angled back towards you. For the same bag, however, the grommeted bag is going to offer you a little bit more internal volume of air than a similarly cut bag um, that is tied in traditionally. The ease of tie-in. This one is somewhat difficult. You can do it. Everyone should be able to learn how to do this. This one, quite easy and quick, except for perhaps that channer stock. Instructions on channer stock tie-ins right over there. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of this video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. If you want to go the extra mile, I also have a Patreon and a special shout out to Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter. But you'll see names now of folks scrolling up. These are folks that contribute to the channel monthly. I'd love to add your name to this list. You often get early access to other videos and there'll be a lot of exclusive Patreon only content coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with things like hats and t-shirts and hoodies and mugs. So go over and get some merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you again for watching. I'm Matt Willis and until next time, cheers. One of the things, so to look, so to look at them again,